Ba'd, we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bearing witness that none has the right to be worshipped or unconditionally obeyed except for him. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. We ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon him, the prophets and messengers that came before him, his family and companions that served alongside him, and those that follow in his blessed path until the day of judgment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, if it was the end of a plot and the beginning of a movie which shows you something that truly disturbs you and moves you, I want to actually go to a scene from one of the saddest moments in our Islamic history. Obviously, you know, we are constantly seeing the news events unfold in front of us, what happened in Buffalo and then what happened once again here in Texas, another school shooting. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for the families of those that are dealing with these things. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. Allahumma ameen. But we've been talking about fitna and we've been talking about dissension and trial. Obviously, you know, the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, where he's asked, Man naja, how do I save myself? And he said, Amsik alayka risana, hold your tongue, wa yasa'ka baytuk, let your home suffice you, wabki ala khati'atik, and cry about your own sins, worry about your own sins. You know, keep yourself to yourself in this regard. But we all know that in the practical world that doesn't always happen. And so there's a scene I want to start with here. And it is one of the hardest scenes to read about in the original fitan, the original trials and tribulations faced within this ummah. It's a scene of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu about to be killed. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, this old noble man who the Prophet وسلم, loved so much, who the companions loved so much, who the angels loved so much and were shy from, is sitting in his chair reading Quran while a group of young people are seeking to assassinate him in the name of religion and truth because they have been riled up and because they have been motivated by what they think is righteousness and justice. And while it's instigated from the outside, it is now permeated on the inside. And a young man walks up to him and grabs his beard and puts up his sword and is about to kill him. And that young man is Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, the son of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. It is one of the most heartbreaking scenes in what takes place of this fitan, of the trials and tribulations and dissension and, and just all of the horrible things that we start to see arise in our Islamic history, which shows you, subhanAllah, even when you have divine revelation, human tendencies lead us to very, very bad scenes. And this is a hard one. Who is Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr? Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr was born on the day that the Prophet وسلم, and his companions were on their way to the farewell Hajj, Hajjat al Wada'. And they were at the Miqat, they were about to go forth, and so he was only three years old when his father passed away. And he got caught up with the wrong crowd that thought that they were doing something that is righteous in going after Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he didn't have the tarbiyah of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. He didn't see the way that his father loved Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The moments they were together were much of the bishara, much of the glad tidings that were given to a person of Jannah. They were given to them together. Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman together, Ali, all together. May Allah be pleased with them. He didn't see all that. But he got caught up with the wrong crowd. Started to hear rumors. And then was charged with a certain type of zeal against Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he's in front of him and he grabs his beard and Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu just saw a dream of the Prophet sallallahu comforting him saying that tonight you're going to break your fast with I, Abu Bakr and Umar with your companions who have preceded you. And Uthman radiallahu anhu has already come to terms and we talked about this in the first in some detail with his life but he's come to terms with the idea that he's going to be killed and he refuses to let anyone spill blood in his name to fight back and kill people in his name. Uthman radiallahu anhu looks up at him and he says, Yabna akhi, oh my nephew, you're my nephew, the son of my brother. Da'anka let go of my beard. Faqad kana abuka yukrimuha. Your father used to love this, he used to honor this beard. 
I'm going to be killed now and I'm going to be made into a martyr and I'm going to meet your father and I don't want to tell your father that the one who sent me here is you, his son. It would disappoint him. What are you doing? What happened to you? How did you get to this place? And at that moment, he comes to his senses. He drops his sword and he runs away and realizes that he's been taken on a ride. That he's joined a group of people that were fueled with lies and that they were killing a righteous man, assassinating a righteous man. SubhanAllah, when you talk about the echo chambers of today, and you talk about the algorithms of today, and the way that people live in their own worlds and they hear things over and over and over and over again, and they become regurgitated. There were righteous people that killed companions of the Prophet in the name of Allah. Righteous, when I say they thought they were righteous, they thought they were acting upon something that was good and they pulled their swords against companions of the Prophet ﷺ. And you say, how does that even happen? How do people become nourished with this nonsense? How do people get into this? And there's a difference between the slander of Aisha radiallahu anha to an extent and the slander of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anha. Those that slandered Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and started to pass rumors, most of them were either hypocrites or people that got loose and reckless with gossip. They weren't doing it in the name of any type of righteousness. They didn't think they were doing anything noble by slandering Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. It was something that is low. It's like the gossip and backbiting when we talk about people's honor in different ways, you know, recklessly. Talk about people and forward things and say things that we shouldn't be saying and fall into major sins without realizing it. With Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, people that actually thought they were doing something good, the culture around these people that killed the likes of Uthman radiallahu anhu, and Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and Al Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, we talked about a few weeks ago, these were people that thought they were doing something good. They were zealots. They thought that this was a religious call, a righteous call. It's a different culture altogether. And that's what makes it all the more dangerous. And subhanAllah, this is before the mechanisms that exist. When you talk about that young man that does something crazy, walks into a supermarket or does something crazy, and you think, what was this person being fed over and over and over and over again for three, four, five years? That doesn't excuse it in any way. But you think about how the world is becoming divided into these chambers. How do we heed these lessons? There are a few things that we can take particularly from the murder of a righteous man in Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And by the way, anytime you read any of these stories, don't assume you're Uthman. Assume you might be the guy holding the sword that doesn't realize that you are harming someone. And tusibu qawman bi jahala. All of us can be susceptible to that. That you're hurting someone, not realizing that you're harming an innocent person. Forwarding a picture, forwarding a rumor, forwarding this, forwarding that your WhatsApp group, your group chat, your social media, whatever it is. Don't assume you're the Uthman. Assume you might be the guy on the other side not realizing it because all of those people, or a lot of them, that killed companions of the Prophet thought that maybe they were doing good things and that they were nourished upon righteousness and taking up a noble cause. Don't assume that. But look at how it played out. And there are a few things to take from this. Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhum is in Hajj and he is Abdullah ibn Umar, the son of the Khalifa that precedes Uthman, sitting in Hajj, and there's a man that was from Egypt, and I didn't just put that in there, it's in Sahih Muslim, that a man from Egypt came to visit, so he's not from that area, in Hajj. And he sees people sitting around Ibn Umar, ta'ala and he says, who's that old man? Man is Shaykh. He doesn't mean it in a nice way. Who's that old man that everyone's sitting around? He doesn't know who he is. He said, that's Abdullah ibn Umar, like you gotta calm down a bit, right? So he walks up to Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, anhuma, and he says, أَتَعْلَمُ أَنَّ عُثْمَانَ فَرَّ يَوْمَ أُحُدْ Do you know that Uthman fled the day of Uhud? He fled from the battle of Uhud? Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma said, naam, yes. قَالَ أَتَعْلَمُ أَنَّهُ تَغَيَّبَ عَنْ بَيْعَةِ الرِّضْوَانِ Do you know that he wasn't present on Bay'atul Ridwan? I know some of this terminology is not known, I'll go through it in a bit. Do you know that he wasn't there the day that companions took a pledge with the Prophet ﷺ to go out under the tree and Allah mentions that he was pleased with them? You know that he wasn't there? He said, yeah, that's true. Naam. قَالَ أَتَعْلَمُ أَنَّهُ تَغَيَّبَ يَوْمَ بَدْرِ Do you know that he missed the battle of Badr? He said, yeah. He said, Allahu Akbar in frustration. 
How do you people support this man? And this happened, and this happened, and this happened. And listen to what Ibn Umar ta'ala anhum said to him. He said, Ta'al ubayyin, ubayyin laka ma sa'alta anhu. Before you go off and start saying, I went and I confirmed everything, let me verify to you everything that you just said. Literally, three half-truths that are more dangerous than full lies. Because a half-truth is more dangerous than a full lie. Uhud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave all of those because again, people fled, most people fled the battlefield once the other, uh, the other side took over it. Allah azza wa jalla afa anhum. He said the second thing, Bayatul Ridwan, if you read the history of that pledge, and this is a man still within a generation where companions are alive, he says, what are you talking about? People took a pledge with the Prophet ﷺ to go to Mecca to rescue Uthman anhu. And the Prophet ﷺ took his hand and said, this is for Uthman and this is me because they thought Uthman was killed. So you had a group of companions that were ready to go risk their lives to save this person's life. And you're saying, but he wasn't there. Of course he wasn't there, the whole thing was about him. But that's what, I mean, it settled in his head. Hey, that's two things. There must be something to it. Then the third thing, he wasn't there on Badr. He said to him, are you crazy? I mean, what's, well, he didn't say to him, are you crazy? But the reasoning, he said, the Prophet ﷺ told him to stay home because the daughter of the Prophet ﷺ, the wife of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Ruqayya radiallahu anhu was sick. And the Prophet ﷺ gave him permission to stay back. And on the day of Badr, when the Muslims won the Battle of Badr, Ruqayya died. That's why they called it the day of great joy and the day of great sadness. And the Prophet ﷺ went to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he told him that you have the ajr, you have the reward of having attended Badr. Because he would have been there if he wasn't caring for the daughter of the Prophet But three things that built up, that charged this person, and made him think that he was upon righteousness. Running with the rumors, right? And hurting someone. And Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, now go back and tell all those other people what I told you. Like, go undo the damage that you've done now because you thought that you were upon truth. This is a method that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned because, subhanAllah, it's, it's what, what we call, you know, when we talk about al-ghisha, deception, من غشة فليس منا, whoever deceives is not one of us. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned putting the, the good grain on the top, which is actual grain, and then putting the rotten stuff in the bottom, right? So you don't show the rotten stuff, you show that thin layer on the top so that people will think it's good, but under it, it's nothing but rotten goods. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever deceives is not from us. The Sahaba asked the Prophet ﷺ about soothsayers, kahin, right? One of the accusations they made about the Prophet ﷺ was they said he was a kahin, a soothsayer. And one of the things they said about these fortune tellers and the, these soothsayers, right? And they didn't have social media back then. They said, Ya Rasulullah, فَإِنَّهُمْ يُحَدِّثُونَ أَحْيَانًا بِالشَّيْءِ يَكُونُ حَقًّا Ya Rasulullah, sometimes they say stuff and they, they get it right. Sometimes they tell us something, these people that work with the jinn and the shayateen and you know, fortune tellers and soothsayers. How is it that sometimes they get it right? They say something that's true. A part of it is true. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Tilka al-kalima min al-haq. They take one word of truth. Yazidun ma'aha mi'ata kadiba. And then they add a hundred lies to it. So they lead with the one word of truth what they hear, right, and they pass on to each other, but then they put a hundred lies on it, but you see the one word of truth, which makes it more potent, which makes it more viral. And this is something, subhanAllah, that happened to the Sahaba of the Prophet ﷺ. And children of the Sahaba fell into it. They fell into the harm. And it's a different type of thing. So what does this mean for us in terms of al-fitan? The rise of deep fakes. SubhanAllah, I was just at a conference this morning, SMU Law, and they were talking about, you know, is free speech going to cover deep fakes or not? You know, when people start to spread around things that are obviously off, and they don't know what they're going to do because the world becomes more and more deceptive, the technology becomes more and more deceptive. What do you do at that point? That's where you really have to take a step back because the Prophet wasallam warns us of this. And Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "And to see the people in jihala, for to be who Allah ma fa'al tum nadi min." Think about the regret you have on the day of judgment. The regret you have when you realize, "I really, really got this wrong. I really messed up." By the way, it happens with families. 
happens in communities. It happens on a small scale. Don't just think about the big things. But that quick thing that you pass, that quick word, that quick thing that you forward, that could be very, very devastating. And in the world that we live in today, bringing forth some of those Islamic ethics and thinking about the algorithms, thinking about the echo chambers, and this is what I want to leave with, inshallah ta'ala, for all of us, as we're thinking about this world around us where everyone is being fed something and then you come into this masjid or you go into the supermarket and people are rising from this world that they've created for themselves. And some of them convinced of their worldviews. And some of them, you know, even have a self-righteousness and a zeal to them. How do we bring some sort of, some sort of intervention to this all? Number one, kun Abdullah al-maqtul. Be the one that is killed, not the one that is killing. Be the one that is wrong, not the one that is wronging. If you're unsure, don't participate. Be careful. It's better to be wrong than to be one who's wronging. Practice safety. Practice restraint, right? When you get involved in these types of things. Number two, number two, when it comes to your brothers and sisters, you always start from a place of husn al We used to have 70 excuses to excuse someone, now you have 70 excuses to blame someone, right? And to spin people's words and spin things in the worst possible interpretation and way. Number three, verify, verify. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this. In ja'akum fasiqun bi naba'in fatabayyanu. You have to verify what comes to you. Number four, ask yourself if it's even worth verifying. Do I even need to verify this or is it, is it nonsense in the first place? Number five, and this is going to be the hardest one. This is going to be the hardest one. Talking to someone who is deep in it and trying to pull them out is one of the greatest forms of sadaqah that you can give. And this is subhanAllah, in all of this, I end with the story that's happening with these, with these people, right? People have been in charge against companions. You have this group of people growing in number who are reading the Qur'an and they're just throwing rumor after rumor after rumor after rumor until they can delegitimize the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Abdullah ibn Abbas ta'ala anhuma, he says to Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, listen, let me go talk to these people. Let me go talk to these people. There were 6,000 of them gathered buzzing like bees reading the Qur'an and circulating some of the most toxic stuff about the companions of the Prophet And they thought they were doing good. Ibn Abbas says, let me go talk to these people. Ali radiallahu anhu says, I'm afraid they'll kill you. These people don't have any restraint, right? Quick, takfir qatil. They'll quickly call you a kafir and they'll kill you. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says, let me try. He goes to a valley of 6,000 khawarij, 6,000 of these people that have been filled with this stuff. And he talks to them, and they were shocked to see him coming to talk to them. They were shocked. And you know what? To make a long story short, after a short conversation with them, he left with 2,000 of the 6,000. He left with 2,000 of the 6,000. Look, you have to understand some people have good intentions and get caught up in some really bad stuff with the algorithms as they work today, and that's always been the case. Someone has to take the Ibn Abbas role. Someone has to take the Ibn Abbas role, and it's probably the hardest role of them all to try to pull people out. So we're going to have to exercise patience with each other also when people interpret and, and, and hear and ingest certain things that have no benefit to them whatsoever. May Allah protect us from harming with our tongues. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from wronging. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from al-kadib. May Allah protect us from the lying, wherever it may be. May Allah purify us of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our communities. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us in a world of deception and count us amongst the truthful and the sincere. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from al-sadiqeen. We ask Allah to make us from al-mukhlaseen, from those who are sincere. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who are steadfast. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our societies in this day and age and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide through us people to this way of al-Islam and to all that it comes with in a way that will grow Insha'Allah ta'ala, all of us closer towards him and in a way that will give us safety in this life and in the next. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li lakum wa isa'al muslimin fastaghfiru anna wa ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allahumma khir al-mu'neen wa al-mu'minat wa al-muslimin wa al-muslimat al-ahya'i minhum wa al-amat inna ka sami'un qareebun wujibu da'awat. Allahumma khir lana wa rahamna wa'afu anna wa la tu'adhibna. 
ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين اللهم إنك عفو كريم وتحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم اغفر لي والدينا رب ارحمهم ما كما ربنا صغارا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في مشارك الأرض ومغاربها اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والكاذبين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا وإخواننا من بينهم سالمين عباد الله أن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعماء يزد لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيم السلام